This is a documentary about a man called Steve Gregson who's hopelessly addicted to Jaffa Cakes. This is Steve. Steve has a rare illness called uh, McVitiitis, which is a, a, a phenomenon um, of craving of Jaffa Cakes and can't seem to get enough of them. Um, the first part of the interview, we, we sat Steve down, but because he's so irritable, restless, and discontent, we had to uh, move to another place. Um, so Steve, uh, like you said, you told us a bit about your childhood and the uh, phenomenon craving of Jaffa Cakes and can you tell us how it progressed? Yeah, like I was saying earlier, it, it, I, I kind of believe it started um, at a really young age. Um, I always felt different as a child. Um, you know, I, I was the middle son of three and my mum fed me brothers on the right breast and she fed me on, on the left and and as a consequence I, I don't think that it was working and I grew up feeling empty and um, always felt this longing for something and um, I, I was a really young kid and I noticed that my mum used to um, purposely hide the Jaffa cakes on the top of the cupboard and um, I always wondered why that was. And she never seemed to offer them me, she just used to eat them, keep them for herself and eat them when we'd gone to bed. So I got up one night and I climbed on the cupboard and, and I got this box of Jaffa cakes down. And, um, I know I shouldn't have done it and I knew it was wrong. Um, and my life's never been the same since. You know, as soon as I put that first Jaffa cake in my mouth, um, that was when it happened. I, I experienced the phenomenon of craving for Jaffa Cakes. So, you know, experience, could you say, no, our um, other addicts usually start on a progression. No, you know, they say people start on um, gas and alcohol and then to weed and so on. Did you have a progression like, say, from bourbon creams to Jaffa Cakes or was it just straight Jaffa Cakes? I, I had had the odd bourbon cream and, and um, you know, I'd, I'd had a little bit of a thing for bounces as well and, you know, I, I did like Maltesers, but it was it was that first Jeff Cake I did all the damage. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing, I'm laughing really because it's that painful that I, I could cry. You know, Jeff Cakes have took so much of my life. So with people with uh, drug use, like the thrill of the chase of getting the drugs and the actual uh, cooking up of the heroin, uh, what is it about Jeff Cakes that like turns you on? Um, it's really how the kind of the stacked up in, in in like a 12 and you just open the box and, and they're all stacked up in that clear you know it's like a fixation and um, I just can't wait to rip that cellophane open and um, the just the rush when when that chocolate melts and you get that marmalade orangey bit in the middle you know it's just um, there's nothing like it there's absolutely nothing like it, you know, I've tried all kinds of different biscuits, custard creams, you know, uh, Garibaldi's, penguins, and they just, you know, they just don't hit the spot. So there's no substitute for Jaffa Cakes? Not for me, no. I, I believe I'm a, a real Jaffa Cake addict. Okay. <clears throat> Have you ever tried to uh, seek help for your problem? Yeah, I did. Um, is the like you get narcotics anonymous is the uh, uh, JA or JCA Jaffa Cake Anonymous? I went to my um, community Jaffa Cake team and um, they, they um, signed me up as a registered Jaffa Cake addict. And um, at first, they, they, they would prescribe me 24 Jaffa Cakes a day and we would plan out when I would eat them. So the, the 24 would get me through the day, but it was... I just could never get enough. A, a Jaffa Cakes, it was like... One Jaffa Cake was too many and a thousand enough, and it wasn't soon before the 24 Jaffa Cakes they were giving me, they, they were gone in less than two hours. You know, I, I'd eat six or seven on the bus home from, from, from picking them up from, the, um, from Sainsbury's. 
Like I say, I've just come out of the kitchen. Um, I've got something behind my back. <clears throat> the thing is today, it's like a lot of the things why you get is just a. Uh, it's not only a Jaffa cake marmalade, marmalade, orangey bits. There's a uh, Jaffa cake, uh, lemon and lime, normal Jaffa cakes. There's all kinds of Jaffa cakes in here. And what's the? Uh, I don't think I should be doing that, giving you Jaffa cakes really. No, no it's, you. it's, it's, um, it's okay today. You know, I can, um, I can look at Jaffa cakes, um, and I know what they're going to do to me if I, if, if I eat one. So, um, I don't eat one. You know, um, these new, um, black currant ones, I haven't even tried them. You know, when I was addicted to Jaffa cakes, they, they it wasn't available, um, you know, and this is what um, Jaffa Cake Anonymous has gave me, you know, it, it's gave me the ability to say no, you know, I can look at Jaffa Cakes now, um, even inside, you know, and it's, it's still stacked up the same and it's still that cellophane, you know, and then all that marmalade bit is still in the middle, but um, that I mugged two old ladies on the way home from Asda um, because they had Jaffa cakes hanging out the carrier bag um, you know when I got caught um, round the back of a shop having a Jaffa cake here So have you actually done Jaffa? Do you just eat them or is it, can you smash them up or do you mix them up with other things or is it, do you just eat them on their own? Um, First of all, um, it was I, I used to suck them, right, um, and then you know as 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 um, things progressed, um, I I used to crush them up, you know, a full box, and um, pour a full box down my throat. Even sometimes in, in the heights of my addiction, two boxes. Um, um, did you gain weight because of your addiction? At, at times I did gain, put on a little weight, but I was running about that much, you know, they're getting and finding, finding ways and means to get more Jaffa cakes. Because um, eventually I was banned from, from all convenience stores and local supermarkets. Mm. You know, um, quick save, you know, ironically, I had a bounty on my head. Because I'd stole that many, you know, stole, stole that many Jaffa cakes out of quick save. I tried using breakaways, but mm. it, it just wasn't the same. They didn't hit the spot. Um, so yeah, it mainly, it, 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 you know, Jaffa cakes were my biscuit of choice. How did this uh, have an effect on your family? Uh, eventually, firstly, they just thought, you know, I was greedy and they didn't mind so much but as time went on you know um, you know they, they quite like to have a Jaffa cake now and again because there was ne never any in the cupboard and um, they, they began, began to distance themselves from me um, they were very ashamed about all the uh, shops that I was stealing Jaffa cakes from my mum had had enough she was fed up of cleaning my room and she asked me to go. I gradually lost contact with my family because um, my life centred more and more around Jaffa Cakes. Um, so how did you seek help with your problem? I hit rock bottom in about 1998. Um, by rock bottom I just, one day I, I think I'd had it um, close on 30. Uh, boxes of Jaffa cakes, and it just wasn't working. Um, it wasn't filling that emptiness. It was no longer filling it, and I dropped to my knees and I cried out for help. Um, and the next day, I found myself in a Jaffa cakes anonymous meeting, um, where I found other people who had the same, shared the same problem with me. 
they had um, they'd eaten Jaffa cakes the same way that I had eaten them. They'd gone to the same lengths to um, to get Jaffa cakes, and the you know Jaffa cakes had took them to to, to the same place as me. They they kind of all hit rock bottom. Um, but what was it was amazing. Some of them hadn't eaten Jaffa cakes for years, and um, I'd never known that. You know, the, the odd other Jaffa cake addict that I'd come into contact with had never been able to kick it. Um, that was powerless. You know, when me on, on my lonesome, I had no, um, I didn't have the power to stop eating Jaffa cakes. So you, you believe that you've got a, a cure to your problem? I found a solution, and today, you know, um, I have a higher power in my life. Um, you know, the, the, the marvellous thing about Jaffa Cakes Anonymous uh, is you can develop your own higher power, and um, that's what I've done. And mine's called Bertie Bassett. That's beyond your custard creams, isn't it? Definitely beyond my custard creams. You know, my life has changed so much um, since I started coming to Jaffa Cakes Anonymous. And um, I stopped using, stopped eating Jaffa Cakes one day at a time. Wow. That's and amazing. They, they even, you know, um, I have a, I've got a key ring at home with a Jaffa Cake and it's got that I'm um, eight years. I've abstained from Jaffa Cakes for eight years. Wow. You know how brilliant is that? That's amazing. Yeah. I hear that they have um, <coughs> the Jaffa Cake conventions. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Jaffa Cake conventions. Well, there's not a Jaffa Cake in sight. Not a Jaffa Cake, no. Um, you get the odd custard creams and um, there's usually plenty of digestives. But no, we all sit down and we share our experience, strength and hope around Jaffa Cakes. Like, it sounds to me that you're a real Jaffa Cake addict. Um, I'm sure these people that come are just like hobnobs. There are a few hobnobs, yeah. I call them fucking spies in the camp. Right. Um, I class myself, you know, I... You no, know, I think they're more like, there must be some people like morning coffee. You know, like them flimsy biscuits that you dip in morning, and they're just weak the, and yeah. fall at the knees. Morning coffee, obnobs, they're all, them lot, they're all crackers, but I, I've read and I've studied the big Jaffa Cake book and um, it describes me in there, you know, I'm, I'm what's known as a real Jaffa Cake addict. And, um, well it started in the 30s, didn't it, by uh, Bob Biscuit? Yeah. Bob, yeah, yeah. And Bob Bill Bis Wafer? No, not Bill Wafer. What's his name? Um, Bill W, Bill, oh, Bill Wagon Wheel. Ah, that's the one, that's the one. Yeah. And that's where this stuff come from. Yeah, they, they both had the same problem. Um, what was it back then, though? Jaffa Cakes weren't around then. Well, Dr Bob, Dr Bob was, um, he was custard creams wow. and Bill W was wagon wheels and they uh, had a spiritual experience and decided that they were going to go and try and help other um, biscuit, ca bist biscuit, wagon wheel addicts and custard cream addicts yeah. um, to break free from their addiction and mm -hmm. um, other fellowships have spiralled from that wow. and one, one of the biggest is Jaffa Cakes Anonymous. Wow. I got it all the anonymous but people are too ashamed to go because of the name. Yeah, yeah, there is Gary Baldy Anonymous. Um, Bob and Cream, Anonymous, getting off the ground. Wow. Is that in Bournemouth? Uh, I think that's where it's founded, Bournemouth. Um, and also there's, you know, um, there's also an, an Italian fellowship called Nice. Um, <laughs> it's, it's funny, you know, I'm laughing and really I could cry when I think where Jaffa Cakes have took me and the, the devastation they've caused in my life, not only to me, you know, but to those around me. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mm. So your life's a lot better now since you've um, abstained from mood altering Jaffa cakes. My life has changed tenfold. Um, I'm now, you know, I've trained up as a Jaffa cake counsellor. Brilliant. And um, you know, I I, um, I work with other Jaffa cake mm. users, oh, eaters. Brilliant. Well, did you know these days, I know mean, you've abstained for eight years, but these days the kids on the street are actually um, <coughs> not just eating Jaffa cakes, it's like they're rubbing them on the body, too many having sex with other girls and rubbing them all over themselves, they, they shoot them, they put them up the bottom, you know, they're doing all kinds of stuff. So from your day, where you just ate, ate, ate them, these days, the kids these days are like tracky bottoms tucked in socks, you know, they're doing all kinds of stuff with Jaffa cakes, even like trying to... Uh, concentrate them to get them even stronger. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, it's mm. it, it it spiralled and you know um, some of the things that the that, that kids are doing today with jaffa cakes is crazy. Even, even the on cars. the way here, on the way here, I seen a kid and he had he was wearing two jaffa cakes his glasses. You know, he'd he'd, um, he'd use the, uh, the 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 orangey bit and. Um, Wearing them like a pair of glasses. So they're actually dissecting the Jaffa cakes to get into them to like find the bits inside to wear them on their outsides. Yeah, the, wow. the, the more the, the, the you know the kind of um, now what the kids today they don't bother eating. Yeah. You know the the, the, the biscuity bit round the edge they're going straight for that wow. marmalade bit. Ah, so there's no messing around with everything, anything. No, no. No, no it's crazy. So what would be your uh, <coughs> message if there's, say, a young kid driving round in his uh, <coughs> 1600 uh, Jaffa cake uh, turbo injection uh, car and it's like there's just pictures of Jaffa cakes all sprayed on the car. He's got Jaffa cakes dangling where the dice are, where it says, like, <coughs> you know, him and his girlfriend's name, it's got Jaffa and cake next to it. What, what would your message be for the hopelessly addicted of the youth, and not only the youth, um, everybody of today, what would be your message for them? Uh, my message would be, um, stay, stay away from that first Jaffa cake. Mm. It's just, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. Um, you know, Jaffa cakes well and truly kicked my ass. Mm. Um, I was young, I was naive, and I thought I could handle them. I thought I was cool, you know, um, going to school with a packed lunchbox full of Jaffa cakes. But um, I wish I'd have never started, you know, I wish I'd have stayed away from that first one. Um, so yeah, that would be my message. Stay away from Jaffa cakes, because they kill and they, and they mess up your life. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Dave. This is Steve. Steve has a rare illness. <laughs>